what's up guys the twilight wander has been finally released and i'm super excited because now there's so many more decks to be making everyone's been super hyping out reflect i want to play dark alice personally uh fairy alice actually seems pretty cool as well uh valentina 2.0 can of course fish regalia which is absolutely amazing and sylvia is just a beast with her flying and swiftness so this format just looks like it's going to be extremely like just awesome there's so many different decks you can make uh, especially with Reflect, who I'm actually quite uh, really excited to maybe play as well. I've been kind of exploring different uh, deck ideas with him too. And I like that there's just so much you can do this format. A lot of people have been a little scared of how strong Reflect is going to be. But I think it's not going to be too much of an issue. I haven't had too much practice in this format uh, just yet anyway. but um, So I could possibly be wrong. But from what I have seen, um, I think uh, it's going to be balanced out quite fine. And so um, I'm going to be opening the box for you guys. It's going to be really cool. I super, super, super hope I get an uber rare because I haven't really seen a bunch of them in person. Um, uh, Dark Alice would be, of course, um, optional, but I mean, preferred. But uh, a reflect is like the most expensive one. So I can always get a reflect, sell it and then get a Dark Alice anyway. So um, before I do get started with the box opening though, um, for anyone that didn't see my pre-release video, uh, if you guys do need any singles from this box or if you need any um, uh, boxes themselves, we have them at Core TCG. But if you're going to be buying it anyway, you might as well put the Rezard or Arla score pad comment in their comment section. Uh, this is just like the top loader thing I did where it's not um, my comment section. But if you guys are buying anything from Core TCG at the end of their checkout, it'll say like, do you have any comments? If you spend at least 20 bucks, you can either put Rezard score pad or Arlo score pad, and they'll send you one of these. And um, it's really cool because the WGP season starting up, so you can't use like a calculator or phone during those events. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so having a score, uh, score pad is pretty cool. And you might as well have one that's representing, you know, like forcible instead of just uh, the plain ones that you see at, like ARG where it just says like ARG or something. So... That's just a quick announcement if you guys wanted these. So uh, I'll have like the whole description in the description below. So like with the link and stuff to everything. And without any more interruptions, I'm just going to go straight into the box. Uh, I have a secret little slip here I already made to make it easy to open. Because as everyone knows, Horsable has always made it absolutely impossible to open any of their products. Uh, for some reason, everything is just like super hard to open. But uh, the box, like the presentation itself looks really nice. It's really simple for once. Normally we have kind of like a lot going on. But um, here you just see like Fairy Alice and Dark Alice with the little cat. <clears throat> there is a little uh, like wooden, I mean cardboard thingy that they add in the box now. Uh, it's really cool that I got the Dark Alice one actually because that's the one I wanted. Uh, so essentially, I'm not going to do it, but these little things hold it up so that if you're trying to show the box. Sorry, it's like really close, but uh, it'll kind of be holding it up right here. And then it'll kind of represent the box instead of the art that you normally see. So I think that's really cool as well. Uh, I'm going to be going through the packs extremely quickly. For everyone that knows, I don't like doing uh, box openings that take like 20 minutes. I just go straight through it and try to have some discussion on some cards. Sorry about that. Uh, during the way. So um, I normally skip through all the commons as well uh, and uncommons and rares. I'll, uh, Lancelot's been reprinted. Foil stones are in this and Arthur. These are, this is actually a really good first pack just because of how amazing these cards are. Um, Arthur has been talked about super just like so much. He's unaffected by... Um, dark and uh, fire so you can't target him with any of those kind of like crimson girl and he can just uh, he's 12 12 gets an eight uh, 800 defense when he taps making him 2,000 and your opponent is just forced to attack him so it's really amazing uh, Lancelot reprints just really well uh, really good as well uh, this card this card right here is just super under like rated right now um, you get to sack any two colors of resonators on the field and depending on whatever you sack, you get certain effects. And people need to pay attention to that card. I think that card's gonna be really good. It's gonna be one of the meta cards, like for sure, this format. Man, I'm just getting a lot of stones. Oh, okay, I thought that was foil, it's not foil. Uh, Ziz, it's one of the evolution monsters. Um, evolution at first was kind of not too exciting for me. I was thinking that, uh, you know, it's kind of like if you evolve and they change something to your evolution. You're just going to end up having, uh, just like, uh, you're going to be tapped out on your turn. So, like, let's say you summon a Ziz turn 3, and you have one mana open, and even if they don't kill it, if they keep two open, and they go with, uh, you evolve next turn, and they, um, chase something, you're kind of going to be out of a creature and your stones. 
But my coworker was like, oh, if you just summon Percy, you can give it a counter without having to like waste your turn. And actually, like, it's gotten me thinking, and I feel like that's actually a really good idea. So uh, I can't wait. He's he's making an evolution deck, so I can't wait to see what it's going to look like. So our first stamp is Glorious Castle Town. This is, of course, a reprint. I got to say that it actually looks really great, though. Like, um, I never really paid attention to all the detail. All the, like, markets down here and stuff, I never really uh, paid attention to because of, like, the text box. So it's really actually nice to see that um, the card actually has really nice art. And even though it's a card nobody was really playing, it's kind of nice to see its um, art. Um, moving on, we have uh, the Overload Baptism. Um, I'm not too excited for Valentina 2.0. I'm sorry, don't kill me. Like, she's gonna, like, literally, like, turn me into a shadow right now. But, um, I don't know why. I feel like it was uh, the original, like, 28 Regalia deck. Oh, Flames is really cool, too, by the way. Um, the, the original 28 Regalia deck, uh, I feel like it wasn't supposed to exist up until now. And it was supposed to be with Valentina. But because it was like really overhyped and a lot of people were uh, talking about how good the deck was going to be. Uh, I'm going to talk about this card in a sec too. Barrier is just amazing. But, um, I, well not not like overhyped, like there's anything wrong with the deck. But I mean like I don't think it's as good as people were expecting it to be. Because they were expecting something like on Bahamut's level. From, from how people were talking about it anyway. But um, I think uh, Valentina was supposed to be that deck. That was like, you know, just a bunch of regalias and because we've already seen it and people kind of know how to counter it properly now it's like not so exciting because they're you know you already know how to deal with it so um for barrier of shadows i think that card is absolutely ridiculous i don't think it does anything to reflect by the way a lot of people are sitting here like oh it's you know a really good counter to reflect that card doesn't do anything to reflect uh reflex regalia isn't going to be used in every single reflect deck uh, there is absolutely no reason to have to use that in any deck. Um, it, it would be decent. Like, I, I like it in Reflex Fairies because it lets you draw. But even from my practice, I still kind of didn't like drawing it late game. Even re with Reflex, like, correcting mana, uh, it just seemed kind of... Oh, this this is one of the nicer memories. I like the art on this one. But um, even with Reflex like draw one stack something on your bottom it just like i hate the thought that like oh i can use this ability to fix you know a dead card in my hand because i shouldn't have dead cards in my hand like it's nice to dig out to something that might be better in a situation but i don't i don't know i just don't like the thought that um oh if i use this card and i have a bad card in my hand i could just put the bad card away and get a good card because it's like I don't know, that, that logic just seems a little flawed to me. It's the same with uh, Morgania. I, once again, haven't really had a lot of practice this format, so I'm not trying to say that Morgania is bad or anything. But <clears throat> I just feel like a lot of people are saying like, oh, if you go first turn Morgania, by the time your opponent even gets to kill it, if you attempt to draw with Reflect on your turn, and then, you know, try to draw with Reflect on their turn, you're going to cycle through at least six cards. But with me, it's like, I don't want to invest my first play on a Morgania to help thin through my deck and find the correct cards when if I just build my deck properly, I'll just draw into them anyway, like, because it's just built well, if that makes sense. So I feel like there's a, there's a, uh, Uber, oh no, okay, so it's just a regular one. I was like, for a second, I was like, oh my god, it is Dark Alice, and there it is. So Dark Alice's art is just beautiful. This card is just amazing. This is just a regular stamp, of course, it's not the Uber, but um, I'm actually not too certain if you can get an Uber if you get a stamped ruler. I don't know if it takes the place of a stamped ruler, but the art on Dark Alice is just amazing. Um, for people that don't know, uh, Dark, I'm just gonna leave it right here because she's so pretty, actually, so... Uh, for people that don't know, with Dark Alice, she can banish cards from the... Well, remove from game cards in the graveyard. And she... When she removes a card from the graveyard, if she has at least three removed, like, at any point, she can deactivate for zero. And on enter, she destroys any... Um, all creatures with a cost that you call. Which I think is absolutely ridiculous. And then she also... Can, uh, do minus two, minus two with her god art to your opponent. Oh, and Sylvia. Okay, that's pretty cool. So I got, like, the, the two rulers I really wanted to pull. Um, I, that, if it would be a lot, like, if I would have wanted a Fairy Alice just so I could have had, like, you know, Fairy Alice and Dark Alice, that'd be pretty cool. But, um, Sylvia is actually one of the really good rulers, too. But so, um, with Dark Alice, you can permanently put a minus 200, minus 200 effect on your opponent's field that lasts till the end of game. Even if she dies, it's still there. It doesn't matter. 
Um, and I think that's just like really underrated and really great because if you combine it with Gruz Ballesta and you have Gruz Ballesta open on your draw phase, that's a total of at least minus 600 because you'll do Gruz Ballesta, recover Gruz Ballesta, and then there's already a minus two on the field. So you're killing like even like Lancelot at that point, which is pretty crazy. There's like nothing that really survives that um, that amount of damage. Not to mention that like it puts every J ruler that's a thousand thousand into Flame of the Outer World range. And so even if it's like a deck that has like Regalias that help uh, give it Imperishable, you would just flame and they can't respond. So um, I think it's really underrated. And like a lot of people I hear still want to play Necromancy. Some people want to play the Magic Match uh, Magic Matchstick deck. And it's like, sure, like, every time these people play these cards, I'm just gonna, like, remove everything out of your graveyard anyway, so... <laughs> it just feels like, a, it's kind of very anti-meta-ish. And for people that know, I like kind of using the decks that build against the meta. Uh, this is a card I'd use one of in that deck anyway. Um, at first, I didn't like Elizabeth because I feel like it's very situational. It's kind of like trying to build a deck around Rapunzel, and then it's so kind of, like, obvious that people don't fall for it. But um, I like that it's a vampire and you can search it with Laura. And being a level 3, there isn't a lot of good level 3s. Uh, Scion's not bad, but I figured I'll just try, try out one. So I don't think Elizabeth's bad. Oh, we have a little bean cat. I mean, black cat. I was going to say bean cat. So now we have a Cheshire cat, a black cat, and a, a bean cat. So now we just need like a white cat and uh, well, we have a blue cat. Uh, red cat. Um, but yeah. So I think Dark Glass is really underrated, and I, I'm looking uh, forward to playing it. Uh, with Oh, Hera is a really good, really, really good card too. Uh, Hera, when she enters the field, destroys a Regalia with zero cost. And uh, if you do, you would draw a card. Uh, the reason why it's worded that way is because I think they didn't want to make it so that it's a little too strong. Oh, Guinevere's reprint looks really nice too. Uh, but they didn't want to make it too strong, so like they wanted it to be used against cards like Deep Blue, cards like uh, the Bow, of course, because the Bow was a little uh, too strong as well, the last format. And so if you have like an Excalibur or Leviathan, you can of course just um, banish it for Imperishable while Hera is in the chase. And not only would she not have a target unless you have another Regalia, in which case you would of course wait for her to target the one you're going to banish anyway. But um... If you banish it, she's not going to draw a card. So they didn't really want to punish like the old Regalias that are like Excalibur and Leviathan. I think they wanted to punish stuff more like the Bow and uh, Deep Blue and stuff that just stay on the field that are zero cost. That might be just a little tattoo uh, strong. Uh, Mechanical Knight. He's like a machine Lancelot kind of, but without swiftness. Um... But yeah, uh, I think Sylvia is going to be really good as well. Uh, Sylvia, I, I just like the fact that it's flying and 1,000-1,000 um, with swiftness. Uh, I've never played, like, as people know... Oh, Vivian looks really good too. The, these boards are just, like, really beautiful. Like, they, they did, like, an extraordinary job this time around. Like, they always do a good job, but, like, this time, even, like, the name font just seems really well done. Uh, the cards' colors are just absolutely insane, so... I think the the stamps in this set look beautiful. Even like Gloria Town when I was talking about it, I was like, wow, like I could actually notice so much more on this card now. But uh Sylvia, um I never played like Red Rush. Like as everyone knows, I never played like Bahamut or anything like that, or like Melgus and Kane. So I'm like maybe I'm thinking about possibly uh playing like a red ruler for once. But uh rewriting laws, this card's getting a lot of hype too. Uh essentially what it does is you get all mana colors from your magic stones for the rest of the turn. It costs one green, one colorless, but you recover two magic stones after you play it. So it's free and you draw a card so it's a cantrip, it just replaces itself. So it there is like really not really any flaw with that card. You just have to be really careful because if you're going against uh, a dark deck, I mean a green deck, and they like cake zone it and they have like let's say like a Gretel and they draw a card and you're tapped out of your turn, that's really gonna suck. So you gotta just be safe. It's not like a bad card to play, but like I'd still rather use actual cards that like maybe do something instead of just ending my deck by one. Uh, I still kind of rather play Familiar of Holy Wind to draw a card. Um, this card makes me so sad. This card makes me so sad. Like, like it's it's Faria and it says Alice, don't worry about me, run. And she's like protecting her from Dark Alice because she's mean. And every, everyone knows I do like lore videos and like this when I saw this card and like, I just read it and I was like Faria no <laughs> like I think Taylor Norris would be happy with this though because like he just wants Faria to die so hard uh, for anyone that doesn't know when he went to um oops when he went to Worlds he uh 
he played against the Faria guy, and like back then, if you tapped Excalibur before you deactivated, it didn't like apply for the God Art because of the way it was worded on the English card. But it, I guess, because like Japanese people don't have that text, it, it does apply. And so he like played his entire churn, setting up for like you know the next churn, and um, thinking he's totally safe. And the guy like taps Excalibur. It's the last pack, by the way. So he, he taps Excalibur and like deactivates and God Arts and, and wins the game doing that. And then the judge told him like, yeah, like that's how you play the card. And when he came back from Japan, he was just like, I'm literally burning every single Faria I ever come across. So, um, sorry, Taylor, <laughs> it's, it's, it happens. So for the last pack, it's not a God pack. So it could still possibly be a, a Uber Rare unless that takes the spot. But we have Justice God Sword, Dark Alice, Rewriting Laws, Laying the Foundation, the Dragon, uh, Spirit of Yggdrasil, a Guinevere, uh, Fire Magic Stone non hollow oh, and a Stamped Excalibur, so that's not so bad. I thought it was going to be like a random like non hollow so to at least get Excalibur is pretty cool. Um, I was actually telling my coworker about this, I think this Excalibur and the regular reprint Excalibur floor are like the nicest cards in the entire game. Like the amount of detail, like I don't know if you guys can see it so well because it's like on the camera, but like there's like a leaf here and like I can notice that leaf. Like I don't know how to say it, like it just looks kind of 3D-ish. Like there's like leaves all over and the card just looks like really, really beautiful. The hollow to it is just insane. Like the, the force of will fits perfectly between the cost and the text, which is just like so random. I just noticed little things like that. The same with the stamp. Like it's not too far from the text here and it's not covering anything on the top here. It just seems like legit the perfect um, uh, stamp. Like, like, I feel like I could just like pick out the sword and just like hold it because it's like so 3D looking. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed the box opening. Don't forget about checking in the description to, to get all your cards. It's really, really cheap. Um, I think we did the prices quite fair. Um, I wouldn't say anything is a little too um, expensive or anything. So uh, I think it's just really good that Forcibles, uh, generally an inexpensive game, you can... Uh, just, you know, be able to afford it and play with your friends. You can play casual, competitive. It doesn't really matter. There's often reprints like we saw in this set. So if you guys do have any questions or concerns or anything like that, just let me know in the comment section below. And until then, I have all five uh, deck profiles coming next week. It's going to be Monday through Friday for one for every single ruler that was released for the set. So look forward to that. I have the starter deck openings coming tomorrow. And until then, I will catch you guys next time.